and welcome to Health Talk. With us today is Barbara Walker, a registered nurse and certified diabetes educator. Today we're going to be talking about self-blood glucose monitoring. In a previous segment on diabetes management, it was mentioned that testing blood glucose is a step for controlling diabetes. What is blood glucose testing? Blood glucose testing allows the person with diabetes to check their blood glucose levels at home when they're not seeing the doctor using a very simple piece of equipment and a very small drop of blood. Why should people with diabetes test their blood? Unless the person is testing their blood at home, they really don't know how their control is. So we encourage all people with diabetes to be testing their blood sugars at least once a day. Uh, the blood glucose testing at home can tell how the person's blood glucose is responding to foods, medications, stress, exercise. So we want them to be testing on a regular basis. It also tells them if they're achieving their blood glucose goal ranges. Um, there are certain goals that a person's blood sugar should be within, and this way they know if they're achieving their goals. How often should they test? Well, that depends on the person and their diabetes. Usually when people are taking the oral agents, that's the fancy name for the pills, uh, they'll be testing once a day. If someone is taking one of the injectable medications or insulin, it's recommended they test at least three or four times a day. And when should they test? Well, it, we encourage folks to vary it. Uh, the usual times are before meals, one and a half to two hours after meals, bedtime. We may also ask them to test at 3 a.m., before and after exercise, before driving. If they feel ill or as if their blood sugar is going too high or too low, we'll ask them to test their blood sugars as, as well. And we do encourage them to vary the times of the testing. If they test the same time every day, we know a lot about one moment in time, but we don't know what's going on the other 23 hours and 59 minutes, so we do encourage them to vary their testing times. What should their blood glucose be when they test? The American Diabetes Association recommendation for the before meal blood sugar is 70 to 130. One and a half to two hours after meals is 90 to 180 and before bed is 110 to 150. I have seen commercials about not having to prick the finger. What does this mean? When we first started to test blood glucose, the uh, person always had to get the drop of blood out of the fingertip. With newer technology, we're now able to get the blood from other parts of the body, such as the palm of the hand, the back of the arm, even the thigh or calf. So if a person's testing their blood sugar as many as four to eight times a day, by using the different sites, it can make it a little less uncomfortable. Are there other blood tests that can tell how well a person's diabetes is being controlled? Yes, there is. Uh, one of the primary blood tests that's done at the physician's office is called the hemoglobin A1C test. And what that tells us is over the past three months, how much glucose has become stuck to the red blood cells of the person's body. And it will give us an overall average, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, of what the person's blood glucose ha has been. It's reported in a percentage. Uh, so a person with a hemoglobin A1C of 7%, that would correlate to their day-to-day -day testing of a blood sugar average of 154. That's called the estimated average glucose. So if a person's blood glucose, uh, or if their A1C is hanging around 6.5%, that means their average blood glucose at home has been around 140. And it's recommended by the American Diabetes Association that the A1C be under 7%, so the person is healthy now and stays healthier in the future by avoiding the complications that go along with diabetes. Can you show us how to test a blood sugar? Sure. There's multiple different devices that are available for a person to use to check their blood sugars, um, and they've become very, very simple to use. This is just one of the models that's available. Uh, to do the testing, we have the meter, and we have a test strip. This is where the sample of blood will be placed. We have a device to help the person get the drop of blood. Uh, we just don't hand them a sharp thing and say, here, poke yourself with it. Um, we always want to start with clean hands, and that can either be soap and water or alcohol hand gel. 
It's not necessary for the person to use an alcohol swab anymore. Um, that takes away about 70% of the germs, and so does soap and water. But alcohol can be very drying on the skin and can lead to scarring when you're testing. So we do recommend just clean hands. So my hands are nice and clean. I use lots of friction. Friction's going to help get the blood up to the surface, which will make it easier to get a sample. We're going to load a lancet into our device by just removing the cap. The lancet goes in. We remove the cover and replace the cap. Most of the devices that help the, fo the folks get their drop of blood are also now adjustable. So we can use the least amount of pressure possible to obtain our blood sample, which is another thing that makes it a little less uncomfortable to do the testing. So my device is all ready to go here, and I'm going to load the strip into the meter. It's going to come all on, and then with this particular meter, the way it lets me know it's ready to test is you'll see a picture of a strip with a little drop of blood moving together, and that tells me we're ready for the sample. When a person's testing their finger, we encourage them to use the sides of the finger. If you use the tip or the pad, it's going to be more uncomfortable because that's where most of the nerve endings are. And actually, we have more blood vessels on the sides of our finger, so it's easier to get a sample, okay? Mm -hmm. So I'm just gonna press this firmly against the side of my finger, and we press the trigger button, and we milk the whole finger Place the strip into the drop of blood and it will beep when it gets enough. And in five seconds, it'll tell me what my blood glucose results are. 110. That's with an acceptable range because I had my breakfast about two hours ago. Very simple. To throw the strip away, you just pull it out. It goes into the regular trash. To remove the lancet, we have our little cap here. Push it down in, pull it out, and it goes into a puncture-resistant container so it be, can be safely disposed of. After the person checks their blood glucose at home, we always have them record their readings. All of the meters now do have memory capabilities, however, most of the memories go backwards. We're not only looking at what number we're getting for the glucose test, but when those numbers are happening. We're looking for patterns and trends. So by having the person record their blood glucose reading in a book and reviewing it at least once a week, that can help the person identify when their blood glucose is not in control. This logbook can also go to the doctor's visits so the physician can review it every time to see if any changes need to be made in the person's medication management. I know we've talked a lot about numbers and what your blood sugar should be. If I were to wake up in the morning and not have anything to eat yet, what would be a good range for me? The American Diabetes Association recommends any before meal test to be between 90 and 130. And that first meal, or first test in the morning is given a special name called the fasting blood sugar. So any, before any meal, whether it's breakfast, lunch, or supper, should be 90 to 130. And if I'm having low blood sugar, what would be some of the symptoms of that? Most people feel like the blood sugar is too low when it gets under 70 milligrams per deciliter. Although everybody's different, so some people feel it a little bit higher, some people feel it a little bit lower. And the symptoms are pretty classic. People feel weak, shaky, um, some folks feel like their heart is pounding in their chest, mm -hmm. they're sweaty, um, difficult concentrating. Um, what's happening with a low blood glucose is there's not enough glucose or sugar in your system. So to treat it, we have the person eat something that's going to absorb into their system quickly so they're feeling better within about 15 to 20 minutes. On the other hand, what are some of the symptoms of high blood glucose levels? When the blood glucose starts to get too high, people complain of dry mouth, frequent urination, unexplained fatigue, cuts or sores that are slow to heal, even leg cramps or nightmares. After I eat a meal, how long should I wait before testing? It's recommended you wait an hour and a half to two hours. That gives your meal plenty of time to digest and absorb into your system and for the medications that the person with diabetes is taking to affect on that blood glucose level. And it's recommended that we keep that number under 180. We talked a lot about how and when to test blood sugar. Can you tell me more about why I need to test so often? 
If a person with diabetes is not testing their blood sugar on a regular basis, they really don't know what's going on with their control. And day-to-day -day control is important um, to avoid the high blood sugars, the low blood sugars. It also tells us how the body's responding to food and exercise and stress. But in the long run, testing the blood sugar can also tell us about our future health as well. Achieving the goals of the before meal, after meal, and bedtime goal blood sugars um, over the long term can predict whether or not pay, uh, people will have complications from diabetes. And unfortunately, for all we know about diabetes, it is still the number one cause in the United States of blindness, dialysis, and non-traumatic amputations. It is still the sixth leading cause of death. What are the consequences of not testing? The person doesn't know. Um, to me, knowledge is power. And if you want to know how your day-to-day -day activities are affecting your blood glucose, you need to test. If you have oatmeal for breakfast one day and you test after, how did that affect your blood glucose? If you've exercised and you've tested after, how does that affect your blood glucose? Most people see a very positive effect from exercise. Um, it burns off the extra glucose in your system and can help you achieve those target ranges. What will happen to my body if I don't control my blood sugar? Most people, when their blood glucose is out of control, they don't feel very good now. Mm -hmm. Their mouth is dry, they're tired, they're making more frequent trips to the bathroom, they're not sleeping well at night. So day to day, you're not feeling well, and it's more difficult to cope with everyday life. In the long run, not controlling our diabetes leads to very, very serious health problems. And most people with diabetes worry that they're going to die because their blood sugar is too low or their blood sugar is too high. But in actuality, the number one cause of death for someone with diabetes is a heart attack or a stroke. And where would someone with diabetes get the tools and supplies that they need? We do recommend that the person with diabetes get a prescription from their physician or their practitioner. Um, that way their insurance is going to help pay for these testing supplies. And they're available through any drugstore, uh, any local chain store like Walmart or Kmart. Um, there are also home deliveries of diabetes testing supplies, which some, some people find very, very convenient, so they don't have to make so many trips out to the pharmacy, particularly in winter. Does insulin need to be refrigerated? Um, when a bottle of insulin is unopened or a pen of insulin is unopened, it's recommended that it is stored in the refrigerator and that way it's guaranteed to be effective through its expiration date. Once the bottle or pen is opened, it can be kept at room temperature. And depending on the type of insulin, it may be kept at room temperature for 10 to as long as 42 days. That's about all the time we have for today. For more information on diabetes and glucose testing, you can visit www.ogh.org. Thanks for watching Health Talk. We'll see you next time. Diabetes education classes are offered at Olean General Hospital. For more information, please call 716-375-4127.